youth is burning brightly in the temple and it's in the form of Reverend John Scott, who will be giving us the, en well, the enrichment this morning. Please help me welcome Reverend John to the mic. Good morning, family. I'm just aflame with that, that let there be light. Um, first hymn just, just fills every cell and fiber and atom of my being with the, the fire of the living spirit. Good morning, and good morning to those who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. My heart is with the people of Christ Church in New Zealand this morning and all that I was writing last night. Let us say together, let there be light in Christ Church. Let there be light in Christ. Let there be light in Jamaica. Let there be light across the globe. Let the light of the cosmic Christ fill the cosmos as the waters fill the sea. Let the light of the cosmic Christ fill the cosmos as the waters fill the sea. My heart is with the people in New Zealand, but my heart is also with the people who have forgotten the truth of who they are. Because to commit something of that nature, one has to have forgotten the truth of one's own origins. And so whenever these, these occurrences happen, I also turn my, my prayers and the light of my consciousness on those people who have forgotten and who need to be reminded, or who may ne never have been told the truth of their glorious heritage, that they are the sons and daughters of this awesome presence and power, called by many names and worshipped in many forms, but ever one, one God, one mind, one infinite intelligence, one heart, one love. And so I've taken, as the title of my encouragement this morning, uh, I've taken it from the advice given by Jesus in Matthew 5, verse 30. Resist not evil. The master knew, my friends, that whatever we are resisting is getting our full attention, don't? And will therefore be maintained in our experience. So I am not inclined to listen to the gory details of the news. You know, what I do is I focus on the truth and if when you shine the light of truth on a situation, then it takes on a new energy and a new feeling. We don't need to be constantly looking at what happened. Let us look at what we want to happen across the globe in the hearts and the minds and the consciousness of the human race. Of course, you might well ask me, so am I supposed to just stand and allow somebody to gun me down or to, to do me ill or rob me? And of course, the answer is not at all. But I am saying that by attacking the effect, you will only activate it at the level of your fear, your anger, and your resentment. So you activate it at the level of your own consciousness. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes in the Science of Mind textbook, for those who like to look it up, page 303, when Jesus, and I quote, when Jesus said, resist not, he meant that non-recognition of evil is the only way to avoid it. This is true according to the law of cause and effect. For what we persist in recognizing, we persist in holding in place. That which we refuse to recognize, we neutralize, and it is no longer there so far as we are concerned." End of quote. So how do you ask do I achieve a consciousness that ensures my physical safety and well-being. Friends, I want you to listen to me carefully. In your experience, there is only your self involved. You know, there's that hymn that old time Jamaican people used to sing, it's me, it's me, it's me, standing in the need of prayer, not my father, not my mother, not my sister, not my brother, me. It's me that needs the work. And we need to work on ourselves so that we begin to see with the eyes of the, of the Christ, to see as God sees goodness and compassion and mercy and love and joy 
in the hearts and minds and consciousness of people all across the world. And you know, I have a story to tell you. There was a, a good friend of mine and myself have coffee some Wednesday mornings. And we were talking this past Wednesday about a mutual friend who hailed from the UK. And she lived in Jamaica in the 70s, early 80s. And at the time, <laughs> there was a, a supposed or a reputed serial rapist who at that time was terrorizing the residents of one of Kingston's suburbs. And so the inhabitants of all of the, the neighborhoods that he was reported to have been in locked their houses at sundown and lived really in, in fear. It was the buzz all around Jamaica. I don't know if many, many of you remember it. But one evening, our friend was sitting in her living room reading with her front door wide open, as was her wont, when there was a knock on her gate. And so she sauntered out, put on her book, and said, hello. And there was a very pleasant young man, quite affable, nicely put together, who said that he, he, um, he well, could she give him some money? Because he, he, he didn't have any money to go home, and he hadn't eaten since morning. She said, well, I don't have any money in the house, but if you come in, I'll make you a sandwich and a cup of tea. And so in he went with her, and he looked first at, she went into the kitchen, uh, to fix, fix him something to eat. And he looked at the book she was reading, and then he hunkered down in front of her bookcase and was looking at all the various metaphysical books that she had there. And when she came back with the sandwich, um, she said, oh, you like that book? Um, and he said, yes, you know, it looks very interesting. She said, well, you can borrow it, but you must bring it back, you know. But I know you young men, you know, bring back my book. These my books are very special to me. So they had this sandwich and this cup of tea together. Uh, spent about a three quarter of an hour. And that began, he came back, by the way, the following week, and that began a long friendship, um, which involved him coming and having a cup of tea and a sandwich and talking about whatever book he had read over the past week. To make a long story short, one afternoon, the police at the local police station called and said, do you know a young man whose name is Baby Roy? She said, no. So they said, OK, well, his real name is, and they, they gave his real name. And she said, yes, he's my friend. Something happened to him? <laughs> so they said, well, he's allowed one phone call, and he gave us your name. She had been entertaining him for a year. Never a whisper of anything improper, no impropriety. They were really good friends. And you'll be pleased to know that she remained his friend all through his trial and his incarceration as well. Friends? <laughs> Um, you can take from that story what you want, but for me, it's just a shining example of when you have none of that expectation in your mind, you are not vibrating at the same level of whatever that is, of the shadow. She was vibrating, as she always does with all people, at the level of light. So when you concern yourself with the good that is in people and with the presence of God within you, all that it wishes to reveal through you has a chance to come through. Which is what the master meant when he said, agree with your adversary. You know, your adversary, your own thoughts, eh? You know, it's one man tell me must do this, and another man tell me must do this. Um, that's what the temptation about was as well, eh? Um, that Jesus undertook. It's his mind saying, why don't you do this? You can do this. And of course, the truth and the light prevailed as the truth and the light always, my friends, prevails. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 91, which tells us, and I quote, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide where? Under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, to me, this is a powerful reminder that when I am self-aware, that is aware of the presence of God as being the only power in my life and the only reality of my being, then I live in the shadow of its eternal activity within me. Since you are always experiencing your own beliefs, your own consciousness, and since the reason this is, is so is because the consciousness of yourself is always acting upon mind to create the body and experience that you of yourself, then you, your only concern is to live under the shadow 
of your God self. But my friends, so many people live under the shadow of their mistakes, their past mistakes. So many people live under the shadow of who did me what? And who, you know, I have a friend who, 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 who said, I want to stop repeating the same, the same experience year after year. And he was a bit annoyed with me because I said, the only way you can do that is to change your focus um, because you, you keep on rehashing and reliving and rehearsing what it is you don't want. He said, but John, I don't want it. And uh, who says, I'm not rehearsing it. I'm willing to change. That's why I've come to you. I said, then do you realize in the last 20 minutes or less, you have told me at least four times how your wife took you to the cleaners and your can't recover because that was such an awful divorce. And she given you a hard time with the children and the visitation rights. And I said, I've heard that story four times in this interview with you, but I know you, it's your favorite topic of conversation. He said, dear God, silence. So you know, friends, your assignment, you know, I always give an assignment, so you can't get away from it. Your assignment this week is to include Psalm 91 in your daily spiritual practice. Simple. Most of you almost know it by heart already, anyhow. But read it mindfully this week, every morning. Remembering that you always live under the, under the shadow of your own identity. If you are living under the shadow of yesterday's fears and yesterday's upsets, then your today will be a repeat of what you have already experienced. If you are living under the shadow of self-criticism and old hurts, then that is what you will be experiencing no matter where you are or no matter where you go. Because the truth is, my beloved, the law of yourself is always in operation, creating your experience. So, when you live under the shadow of the truth of your being, that you are the beloved of the father, the father, mother, the creator, the mind that created all things, when you live under the shadow of that, in the shade, the cool shade of that knowing, then you don't get hot under the collar when you are faced with challenges and you are faced with the irritants that, that are going to crop up from time to time because you can call upon that power within you and turn on the light of your consciousness and shine it on all situations, no matter where they are and no matter what is happening. I never cease to be amazed, you know, at in our, our outreach at the, the prisons here, I never, it, it amazes me all the time. I shouldn't be amazed because I know the power of the light, but it amazes me that in the squalor and the, the, the really medieval circumstances that they're living under, so many of those participants in our Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program find this deep peace and this, this, this joy um, at just being alive and being able to, to pursue even in those circumstances, the dreams of their hearts and the, the, the desires of their minds. It's really an inspiration and it, it really is very, very humbling um, to be in their presence because you just think, I take for granted, you know, um, so much in my own life, my freedom and my, I mean, I think we do it too, you know, we don't have people in Jamaica that think we, you know, try to prescribe what we should worship, how we should worship, what we can do, how we can do it. I mean, we have one of the world's freest, might as well be called Jamaica and Mount don't belong to them, but you know, the press is, free, is so free <laughs> that you know, they're allowed to criticize and to say what they like. Um, we have an amazing, although it needs fixing, but an amazing justice system. We have a society that really um, is inclusive and if it's not yet a total reality, we are really far along the path of making a reality of our national motto out of many, one people. A client, you know, um, was, was talking with me and he said, give me something to read from the Science of Mind textbook uh, that I would find useful in this, in this quest to resist not evil. 
And I gave him Ernest Holmes um, from the Tanselman textbook, page 441, where Holmes says, there are no enemies external to your own mind. Nothing can happen to us unless it happens through us. That which we refuse to accept to us cannot be, and that which to us is cannot help becoming a reality in our lives. Holmes continues, but someone will say, I did not conceive of this evil which came upon me. It was not in my mind. The question then arises, can any particular evil be real to one if he refuses to entertain it in his thoughts? And Holmes says, the answer must forever be, it cannot. This is one of those hard sayings which it is difficult to understand, but the principle involved is plain. If we can divorce our lives from the thought of evil, from receptivity to it, if we can bring our mentality to a place where it no longer conceives evil, then evil cannot exist for us." End of quote. So friends, I want to leave you with, with a story by a woman called Lisa Subé, which illustrates the triumph that light can have over darkness. It is titled, The Mouse and the Light. And as Sobe notes, it's for children of all ages. So let the picnic in you listen to this story and see what you can learn from it. The Mouse and the Light. In the center of the most beautiful garden in the world stood the Tree of Wisdom. From this great tree, there grew many branches and leaves. It spread its roots throughout the land. The tree was a place of comfort, and creatures would often come to it and sit in its shade and feel its great truths. For many years, there was harmony. Then one day, a shade from one long branch decided that it was not happy. The shade did not want to give comfort or shelter. Fools, cried the shade as it spread beneath the tree. I know more than any of them. I am made, I am not made to serve. I should rule over everything. And so it was that in pride and hatred, the shade tugged and pulled and stretched itself until at last it was able to break its attachment to the great tree of wisdom. It became the first shadow. Instead of using its power to give shade, it created a cold darkness that blinded all those it touched to the truth. Instead of using its voice to impart great truths to those around it, the shadow whispered, only lies. The shadow crept away from the tree of wisdom and drifted far into a barren place where it crawled into a hole in the sand. It sank deep, deep into the earth. The shadow grew and plotted. It would wait beneath the surface until a sad or doubting creature came near. Then the shadow would rise up and overtake the unsuspecting creature and blind it to truth and bend it to its will. Over many years and many miles, the shadow created an underground army. Then the army of the shadow began to strike without warning, bringing fear, sadness, and hate to innocent creatures. You cannot fight, I will win, he lied. Some began to hide and fear the very light of day, for they thought that it was the cause of the shadow. Others began to hate and fear all the shade of the world, not being able to tell the difference between shade and shadow. It came to pass that creatures began to feel anger toward all things different from themselves. They even became afraid of their own shadows. They stayed in their homes, and when they went out, they didn't go far. One day, 
A field mouse went to the tree of wisdom, shook its small fist and shouted, how could you create such a terror upon us? Why is this allowed to continue? The great tree bowed its huge trunk. It shook and its leaves fell like tears, but it did not answer. And then a voice spoke from all around. I created light and darkness. I made creatures, great and small. To one and all, I gave the power to build or destroy, bring joy or pain. One among you has chosen darkness and pain, but this is not my wish. Though dazzled by being in the presence of this great power, the mouse was still angry. Then why do you not stop the shadow, cried the mouse. Because I have given the power to those the shadow harms. The shadow has grown through the lack of caring in creatures. Now it is your job to stop it, the great voice answered. The voice told the mouse how to win. You cannot live in fear. Fear only makes the shadow grow. To be rid of darkness, shine a powerful light of truth. To be rid of cold, bring only warmth wherever you go. The mouse answered, I will go and tell the others what you taught me. I will remember not to hate because hate makes the shadow stronger. But Mouse worried, I'm only one small being, and the shadows are many. How can I ever hope to succeed? Suddenly, Mouse was surrounded in a beautiful golden light and warmth. You will know that as the shadow began with one small dark being, now the light will grow with you, my small messenger. And so it was that one tiny creature set out into the world with every kind word and every truth it spoke, the world around it healed. Others joined the mouse and soon the light grew and the shadows faded. One by one, the shadows followers fell before the mouse and the light. The shadow sank back into its hole in the earth, vanishing like drops of water in the burning sands of time. And as we say in Jamaica, Jack Mandora may not choose none. But I want you to take that idea with you, my friends, that you might feel sometimes like you're just one small mouse. But your light is so incandescent and so beautiful and so powerful that if you just remind yourself every day when you open your eyes and say, thank God for the light that I am, let me shine. Show me how to shine, then I know I know you will be making a difference, not just in your small world, because when the light from all our hearts joins its, its glorious blaze, we will fill this planet with the light of truth, the light of love, the light of compassion, the light of the cosmic Christ, full of grace and full of truth. Shine, my friends, shine. Namaste.